There are vicious goblin hordes, ready to make us their next meal. The land and skies are filled with heartless scavengers, corrupted by ember. Massive infestations of mindless beasts, consuming everything in their path. Shambling, unearthed dead, clutching at the living. Unspeakable horrors from beyond the grave. They all outnumber us, and they've cornered us. But they've also underestimated us. And now, you are here. Remember, Torchlight! Free the Frontiers! My name is Max Schaefer, and I'm the CEO and founder of Ektra Games. And uh, gamers may also know me previously from Runic, where I also founded and created the Torchlight franchise, and before that at Blizzard, where we made Diablo, Diablo 2, and uh, Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction expansion. After Torchlight 2 was completed, the uh, team at Runic Games decided to change directions a little bit and work on Hob, which was a, a wonderful single-player adventure game. But we felt like there was a lot more to do with the Torchlight universe and a, a lot of expansion that we could do with it. So uh, about two years ago, um, I left Runic and started a new studio here in San Francisco with uh, about 17 of my best friends and <laughs> uh, set up what I think is a great, great team uh, aimed specifically at doing wonderful things with the Torchlight franchise. To do justice to the Torchlight franchise and to take it to the next level, we really had to assemble an all-star team uh, that's capable of doing it. So coming to the Bay Area gave us a wonderful opportunity because in a sense we're able to get the band back together. So I've reunited with some co-workers that I worked with previously uh, who have worked on the Diablo titles for example. We got some of the guys from Runic to come down who worked on Torchlight and then we called up everyone we knew that was really good at this sort of thing and hired them and we've assembled a team that, that is uniquely qualified to make this sort of game. And so now I'm very, very pleased to announce to everybody that we are taking the next step with Torchlight and making an MMO, uh, an action RPG MMO, and it's called Torchlight Frontiers. So we are, we're not just making a generic MMO and branding it with Torchlight characters. This is a true Torchlight game. So it's going to have very similar controls to the original Torchlights. It's going to have very visceral combat, very good feel and weighty swings to your weapons. People who played Torchlight will be able to sit down and play it immediately, but then they'll discover all the new cool things we can do because it is a persistent world in a shared universe. So Torchlight 1 introduced gamers to the world of Torchlight, and Torchlight 2 let you play it with your friends. But uh, in, in Torchlight Frontiers, we're taking that Torchlight gameplay and we're putting it into a true MMO uh, where you will be enfranchised not just in your character, but also in your place in the world and in the community of players that are there with you. We're also able, with the MMO format, uh, to grow this world. It'll be a living and breathing world that will grow over time and will change over time as we continue to develop for the next, hopefully, several years. We have gone to great lengths to make sure that fans of the Torchlight series will be very happy with what we're making. Uh, it'll feel familiar and yet have all kinds of new stuff for you to play. We cannot wait for you to be able to see what we're making, and that's coming very soon. Very happy today to be able to announce, though, that it exists and that we'll be in communication with you over the next several months and give you more details as we go.
Greetings, Torchlight fans. Thank you all so much for joining us for our very first live stream here live from PAX West 2018. This is a, an amazing event. Hopefully the audio is holding up for you guys okay. It's very loud here, so I hope everything comes in clear, looks fine, sounds fine. Uh, I am Sofetch, Jared. I'm the uh, community manager for Perfect World, and joined with me is Tyler. I'm Tyler Thompson, the project lead for Torchlight Frontiers. Uh, I've worked on uh, action RPGs for a long time, all the way back to Diablo 2 and Diablo 2 Lord's Destruction. Awesome. So today we have a very special treat for you all. We are going to be playing the Torchlight Frontiers demo, the first public demo. So you guys just saw a bunch of our videos. Uh, we went through and showed off some of our gameplay footage that released a couple weeks ago. But now we're actually going to hop into the game client and see the game live in, in action. So I'm going to pull up chat here on this side. So if you guys have any questions about the game, definitely shoot them for us. Uh, we're going to be reading chat. Tyler will be more than happy to help uh, answer any of the questions that you guys have that we can answer. Again, the game is very early. This is our first public showing, of course. So there are many placeholders, but this, I think, is a good representation of what the game has to offer. Absolutely. It's a, it's a slice of the content we currently have, but it really is also a very compressed experience of trying to take what would be months and months of people like having this game as a hobby and coming back and playing and playing and trying to push it together into 15 minutes so yeah, yeah. you're going to see items rain you're going to see I uh, the character get powerful really fast he's going to start with tons of skills it's it's gonna, it's dense yeah but, uh, it definitely gives you a taste for what this game's all about <laughs> and it is more curated than the real game will be Absolutely. which yeah which provides a little bit of a better uh, show for the demo yeah yeah and so the the final release and the the public betas that you guys get a chance to test uh, sometime in the near future are going to be a little bit different than this. It'll be very different. Yeah. It'll be more of uh, sit down and play for hours and really build up your character <laughs> kind of experience. All right, cool. So we're going to go ahead and hop in here. Uh, let's take a look at the couple of the classes we have available. So right now, there is the Dusk Mage in both male and female. And you can see we have a pet right here. Absolutely. An alpaca. It wouldn't be a Torchlight game without pets. Yeah. Familiar pets that you're used to having in your home. Crazy pets that like an alpaca that you wouldn't expect. And then just um, wild pets that are just whimsical and fun. Awesome. And then here we have the Forged. This guy's pretty sweet. I think I'm going to start off with a Dusk Mage first. So Dusk let's go Mage ahead and is our in. blaster class. It's yeah. still not your, your typical blaster. It, it, one of the big things it does that's different is it has light skills and dark skills. The dark skills are there to really um, be chaotic, hitting area effect, a little bit out of control. And then the, the light skills are directed, controlled, and focused. And we've tried to make the metagame for this class be that you're going back and forth between these skills. You're using a little bit of dark and a little bit of light. We don't really want players to be um, wholly focused on one or the other. And to encourage that, we have some passive abilities that are really powerful that you can equip, like the opposing forces that he has here, yeah. that, that allow you to like get some benefits by using one and, and going back one and then the other going back and forth. Yeah, so let's take a look at some of these skills here. I think this is pretty fascinating. So you just mentioned opposing forces, which is awesome. Right, these are That's their a, passives. Like, a dynamic for the character. Yeah, yeah. Each of these passives, we've, we're trying to make the passives be pretty hefty, significant changes to how your character plays. And we only have a few of them we're showing here at the show, but we've only got three slots that you're gonna have to pick to put them in, and that's what allows us to make them so powerful. Um, and in the case of Dusk Mage with opposing forces, we're going to have alternatives to opposing forces. There are other ways for light and dark skills to work together, and you can only pick one of those to be slotted at a time. That's awesome. And we'll see a little bit more of that, too, once I actually jump into the gameplay. You'll see the, the resource bar in the bottom right-hand corner. So let's take a look at some of these skills here. Like you were mentioning before, we have the light and dark skills. Right. So here we go. We have Consecration, which it gives you a damage bonus mm -hmm. to yourself and your allies. Right. Yeah, you know, when you stand within it, that's pretty sweet. In fact, we have... you even get more bonus the more of your allies are standing inside of it. So ah, yeah. Not only you're more powerful by being there, but if you can get all your buddies to be there too, you're even stronger. That's incredible. <laughs> Here, Holy Bolt. Looks like just a straight damage nuke. Yep. And then we have Movement. Yeah, a luminous run. run. Not only is it a speed boost, but it allows you to run through monsters, which is a great escape ability. Um, yes, uh, the interface is definitely a work in progress. All of this is a work in progress. <laughs> it is, but I will say it's generally the style we're going with mm -hmm. the interface. We do not currently have a plan to overhaul how this UI works. We, um, we are playing on this for PC and for console, mm -hmm. so you'll see things being kind of bigger. But at the same time, um, you know, it's kind of that simplification and clarity that we're going for. Cool. 
And let's take a look at Unholy Bolt here too. So like you said, with the opposing forces dynamic, we have the light and then the dark here. So it unleashes three Serpentine Bolts. Yeah, so this is right now the only dark ability we're showing, mm -hmm. but um, we have several others we're playing with at the office. This has been a go-to and good fun one of just being able to blast a whole bunch of monsters at once with a little bit of uh, uh, it being out of control. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. And, you know, I played uh, I played the Ember Mage in Torchlight 2, mm -hmm. so this feels really comfortable for me to awesome. just hop in and play the Dusk Mage. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on some of these tabs. We have the inventory here, which uh, once I start killing things, then I'll get a bunch of loot and we can switch that over. Uh, party interface, it's a... Uh, unfortunately, we're, we're just playing solo right now, but you can definitely party with people and see others in the world. And here we go, we have a little bit of a preview of the map. And can I click on this? Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, awesome. <laughs> so here's a little, like, the overworld yeah, map. Yeah, we'll have these overworld maps to kind of give you a feel for the public areas that are available and the progression through them and kind of which one you're nearby. It also is indicating how, you know, for the Goblin Forest, you may see at the demo and what we're doing is mostly a deciduous forest area that you're in, but later we have other places by rivers and by lakes and just some wildly different other areas that the Goblins are fighting in. Yeah, that's awesome. And I saw a question about the platforms. Yes, we will be on PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. Correct. Yes. Cool. All right. Let's get started. So it's asking us to talk to General Gray. Let's check out General Gray here. All right, cool. Uh, I don't think we need to read all of this. Yeah, if somebody sure. wants to read Absolutely. it later, yeah, they can go back and watch the VOD. <laughs> we have quests that will pull you through the game, point you in directions to go, give you a reason to, uh, for what you're doing and where, what you should be doing. This is looking real good. So I noticed I played some earlier versions of the of the demo. Right up here is Zaya, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. from the uh, the announced trailer. Right. Yeah, she's chilling here in the base. She doesn't have much to roll to play in the demo itself. But yeah, she not yet. She's a quest giver in, in the actual game. <laughs> so here's the Imperial Outpost, looking pretty sweet. This is kind of the base, right? And yeah, towns this is where you pick up your quests. You're gonna see a lot of other players in. You're going to see them, you're going to be able to see what cool outfits they've got, what pets they have, and just generally have a place you can kind of hang around and congregate with other players. Oh, did the player characters have three fingers? <laughs> Do they have three fingers? They, uh, uh, I think they he's got are, five. Like many characters in, in, uh, in oh. video games, their fingers are not what you would normally see in humans. <laughs> um, the mage has for, a for different weapon. So. And stuff. But you can't see. Yes, the digitus mm -hmm. is one of the one of the big things that goes on with the dusk mage. It's one of the weapon one-handed weapons you can equip as a dusk mage is a digitus, which is um, here. Let's see inventory. Which is oh, a one-handed weapon that replaces your hand with a magical thing. Anything from kind of a really cool um, wristwatchy bracelet thing all the way up to this like tentacly stuff that we're showing here in the demo. Yeah, that's um, super and cool. many things in between. And then and, he has the offhand too. There's a scroll floating and, around there. And there's offhand. Like eventually you'll see be able to carry a shield there instead or, or something else. Um, but for now at least we're showing the demo a, a focus, a item that's there to increase your damage uh, capability. Yeah. There's a question about X type of damage. Is that a thing? And yeah, I think we're going to be Wait, showing that a little bit yeah, in, in the so moment. Each yeah. Of the, each of the weapons has an element that it does in its damage type and has a chance of doing some elemental effects. So um, physical damage is what we generally start with. It has some, can come with a chance to bleed, but we also have cold and poison. And um, I don't think I don't have poison fire in here, but we definitely have cold, uh, electrical, and physical in in the demo. Nice, cool. So let's go ahead and hop out there and fight some dudes. So this is a, a zone, and it says public. What does that right, mean? So the public oh. zone mean like in town, you're going to see a larger crowds of people being able to play. Public Zones is the other place where you're going to run into random other people playing. Um, so far, we have found with playing amongst ourselves that really we wanted to limit it to about eight people in these areas because we want some familiar faces, people you run into more than once, mm -hmm. and we don't want to have this feeling like you're kind of all alone in Times Square. Where you're <laughs> surrounded by people, but there's so many of them of so many different names that you might as well be by yourself. Instead, we want to be a small enough crowd of players that you're likely to run into them again, maybe party up with them, maybe get to know them, because it's not just like you and a giant crowd. Yeah, and it's very frequent that you will just see other players running around here doing their own quests, and you can hop in and help them out, or they'll help you out, or you can just ignore them if they're having trouble, right. and you, you can try to solo exactly. the mobs on your own. Monsters, yeah, it's a really fun dynamic. The monsters here respawn. The items and like the, the all the gadgets and things you click on are just for you, so no one's stealing your wood or your stone stuff. Um, and since the monsters keep coming back, you'll generally run around and always find things to fight and kill. Yeah. So one of the really cool things that we can show off right now is 
Oh, there's gathering. Yes. So I don't know if we can talk too much about we have what this is useful for. Yeah. General, <laughs> Clearly. This is a way that you can get uh, resources for that crafting system. It's spread throughout the area. Everything from that stone there, where you can get some stone, to uh, trees to get wood from, things like that. Uh, yes, this will be a pseudo MMO. It is going to be massively multiplayer and online. Right. So it, it is like the literal interpretation yeah, of MMO. Not, we, <laughs> we, we know that when we use the term MMO, that it has a lot of different definitions for different people. And so we mostly try to talk about this as an online game. But it is it's an online game, it's a service, it's something we plan on, we've built and are plan on adding to over time. So that you, um, we can offer new places to go, new ventures to do, new things to play with. Um, That's great to hear. So <laughs> it, it has, it is built as a service from the very beginning. Cool. So our quest here is to kill ten dudes, which we already did, and then uh, reigniting the torch, equip fire armor, equip ice armor. Yeah, basically so. for the demo, we wanted to give you know you some reason to be running around here, point you in the direction of getting some uh, some of the kind of items you might want. Um, ooh, you got good electrical stuff Yeah, there. that's pretty sweet. Um, so it looks like we have the fire armor, but this one might be better. It's got a little bit less uh, no, fire got, protection, no, but it has more like goblin. undead armor. Yeah, and goblin armor. Yeah. And it's rare, of course. Of course we want that. All right, this has higher DPS, so we're going to be snagging that one. Poison armor, I don't think we need to... Okay, we need to find an ice weapon now. So yeah. let's go out there and keep killing dudes. And you can see there's a lot of fun stuff in here. There's uh, uh, like breakable boxes. <laughs> Lots of things explode. There's just like loot pinata everywhere. I love that. We've really cranked up on the demo in particular. You're seeing a lot more items drop. You're going to see a lot more gold and things mm -hmm. drop than you do in the regular game. You can see in the upper right-hand corner where it's talking about plus luck and plus item level. Um, these are modifiers that we can put on a level so that when we do things like map works, we can, um, we can make there be more reward for also there being more... Uh, more challenge mm -hmm. for that level that you're playing in. Yeah. We just cranked up the rewards what for here on the show floor. All right, cool. So I think we just got a nice weapon. Let's take a look. I don't want to be getting murdered here while I'm going through the inventory. And it looks like we picked up some other weapon or some other pieces Help. of armor too. Yeah. yeah, it auto equips when there's nothing equipped, so that's awesome. So let's see. I think this was it. Yeah, yeah there we nice go. Weapon. Sweet. Okay. Nice. That looks cool. All right. There we go. All right, that guy's dead. Cool. Awesome. So we completed that quest, report to General Gray. Here we go. I'll do it. Let's go. All right. So now we're going to be going into a dungeon, and this one says private. Yeah, so can we talk about area. that? This means this is going to be different from that public area. It's for you and your party to be able to play through a progressive area where monsters don't respawn. You're clearing it out. The gadgets and stuff don't reset. It's, it's, it's intended for you to be an experience that you're kind of playing through to an end. Um, these are off of the public areas and available for, for players to run into. So mm -hmm. a lot of times a quest is going to direct you into those areas and, and we'll be asking you to you know, complete several of these progressive areas as you try to move through the game. Yeah, and even though this says private, you can still go in here with your friends, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a place for you and your party to play together. That's fantastic. Oh, that guy just rezzed all those dudes. Yes, yeah, so the shaman, so we have various kinds of goblins that you can play against. Here in the demo, we've really cranked up how many of them show up and what kinds show up. Uh, you've got this guy with uh -huh. a big club, the engineer is making circles of fire on the ground. You've got shamans running around that are resurrecting other goblins and firing fireballs at you. You've got goblin gunners that have like these big um, muskets that they're like aiming at you and you can dodge. It's just trying to create a variety of tactical situations, different ways things you have to play against, different ways you have to play to avoid or work with them. Focusing on focusing fire on the shaman, for instance, yeah. so he doesn't um, resurrect before you try to take out the other guys. Oh, this thing looks cool. Oh, it's a shrine of healing. So yeah, we nice. have uh, a variety of shrines that randomly appear in the level. This is a randomly generated level, just like the previous one was as well. Um, and. Albeit it's a small one for the demo, it's yeah. like a beginning and end piece jammed together. Um, Man, <laughs> this alpaca is great. Ponzi's just been going ham this whole time, just yeah, been getting kills for me. 
This environment is incredible too. I love the depth of field and there's like foreground framing, Absolutely. but you can still see everything that's happening with your character. This is actually just this one of three different levels of the Goblin Caves that have each has a different flavor and style. They all similarly look like caves, but as you get deeper, they get like more red with lava stuff and, and, a, and more of a fire focus. Um, and it, it's just we're just trying to create some variety and, and uniqueness to the places you're playing. Yeah, definitely. There was a question just a little bit ago about skills and skill points. Are we right. ready to talk a little we bit about that? We can talk some about that. Yeah. Um, the, we haven't really described how you get skills and how skills work other than to say uh, you're gathering skill points and you'll be spending those skill points on skills as, as you um, advance to the game. Nice. Um, so I know a little bit about what's to come. <laughs> so I'm going to see if I have some better gear that we can equip here. That's a better weapon. Okay, that's better. There we go. That's better. You don't nice, want to do poison nice. armor. We did oh, drop oh, okay, a bunch okay. of poison stuff <laughs> in here just to make it look cool. But honestly, you, know, you are in the Goblin Land, and it is all about fire and physical. Ah, uh, get the goblins. insider tips, huh? So okay. So don't, yeah, don't. Now, what damage type you do, that's up to you. Just get whatever you want to go for. All there. right, cool. I like the electrical staff. That looks hot. We want all to right. allow players to really pick an elemental type that they're enjoying playing. Yeah right now so we're letting we're a little more open right now on what elements you're using but as far as armor goes we want to be pretty predictable we don't want to make it a game where the best elemental type of armor to use is uh just all of them like you don't we'd rather be more focused in saying this area in the game focus on fire and physical that's the thing to worry about mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, we are trying to answer the questions. It's a little bit challenging to play and talk at the same time, and we have a lot to cover. So there was a question about the mage resource system in the bottom right. Yeah, so... Yeah, so, I mean, the mage really uses a classic energy mechanic on his spells as far as what to use when. Um, but like I was talking about before, the opposing forces, there's these um, other bars that build up for um, using more light and more dark skills. Mm -hmm. Like you can see here, I'm using the light skill and the dark bar is filling. Yeah, yeah. The more damage you do with it, the more it fills. And then if you switch to dark, you'll get a benefit from that. Oh, okay. I want to stay alive here. <laughs> so now you can see that it's glowing. And that means, and his hands are glowing purple. That's actually meaning he's got double damage going on now. Ah. Um, and then he can start doing more damage with, with dark skills. And when he does, goes back to light from there, you'll get your energy ball filling faster. Nice, nice. Yeah, and you can do that with the other side too, right? Now that I'm using more of the dark energy, it's building the light bar. Right. Yeah, that's really cool. And well, there's a lot of stuff on the, the screen here. One of the ways that we are going to have available for playing with the dark and light skills, um, and we do that. All, all that is kind of selected by the player through the passive. Nice. All right, let's kill now, this he's dude. He's really oh, played oh. this before. In yeah. General, <laughs> on the floor, when we're watching people play who have who are not as familiar with the game, the, that battle is a real challenge for them. Uh, in the actual game, though, you're going to see that uh, he's got like at least four or five times as many hit points and does a lot more damage uh, in the real game than he does here. Nice. Ooh, high Whoa. Master shoulders. They're so Those cool. are cool. Yeah, I want to check these out. Right here. There's like a beehive oh, nice. on your shoulder pad. Look at that. Hey, I got pretty so lucky. So cool. Cool. All right, I got a few more upgrades. I beat the boss in this demo. We're able to knock through it pretty quick. Uh, let's see. No, there was no Kickstarter for this game. We've announced you two <laughs> classes. Uh, that's the Forged and the uh, Dust Mage. Nice. How does Torchlight's expansion into the mining business affect the goblins community, goblin community's actually, economic I, I stability? Think actually, <laughs> goblin community's economic stability is more heavily impacted by just the mass slaughtering that you're doing of the goblins. Um, <laughs> I think they're having a worker shortage right now oh. more than they're worried about supply and demand for rocks. <laughs> um, you've All had right. to work hard to make sure that you don't have too much empathy for these gremlin-like monsters. <laughs> Uh, and, and worry about things like their homes and their lives and their livelihoods. <laughs> um, All right, cool. That was fun. Generate content. I've seen a few questions about that. And mm -hmm. to be honest, guys, we're making an online game. So uh, right now our focus is being uh, a, a, a fun place for people to gather together and play on and that has an economy and a fairness to it that's going to make it hard for us to allow players to really modify those rules or change how easy or hard the game is. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. Uh, how many classes will there be? 
Uh, like you just said, there's two classes announced right now, but there will definitely be more There'll classes. Be more, we, yeah, we, we can't say which ones they are yet. Actively been working on more <laughs> classes than that. Yeah. Uh, character customization at this point in the game is just limited to male and female mm -hmm. when it comes to when you're creating your character. Yeah. Um, we'll uh, we've talked about and are open to and probably will do more than that, but we have not begun work on any other forms of customization yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen one of the other characters. I can't say anything about it, but it is really fun. It is. <laughs> I'm so it's excited for it. I would almost. I, I feel like we've taken what surprised us as being for ourselves one of the more exciting character classes. <laughs> oh no, we crashed. It's <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, on the demo more, floor. And we've kind of held that one back to be a third one that we'll announce later. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give more details on later. Oh, uh, there was another question about housing or hideout. I don't know if we can say too much we about that yet, about but... We talked about the Fort Sum. Yeah. Max has already done that in a couple interviews. Um, without going into too much detail on it, mm -hmm. we have a Fort system, which is a form of player housing. That's where you'll have account progression and player progression stuff um, going on. And it'll be visible beyond just being an apartment out of town. There'll be something other players will run into and be able to take advantage of. Yeah, that seems really cool. You saw another character? Yeah. Is there a world map of Torchlight Frontier's world? Well, um, we have these sna these subsets of the uh, world map that we're showing here. Yeah. That the, this is like the Goblin Forest of it. It does fit into the world as a whole. Um, I don't have on screen a way to show that in the game, like where this is in the meta map. But trust <laughs> us, we have we have gone into the lore, know how the continents are set up, and have carved out the places where our where our action takes place. Yeah, we have a lot of really cool concept art out there too. If you really want to search and find that stuff, then you can see a lot of the concepts for maybe potential environments. Uh, I see somebody saying that you're telling me is that you can play a furnace. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so let's so take a look at the forge here. It's a little bit like <laughs> a furnace with crab legs on it. Yeah. Um, it's been super fun to be working on and building the forge. It's got it's got kind of a charming character of a robot. Uh, that's kind of cobbled together as you play it. It's got um, it's got a mix of, of ranged and melee, and it's super fun to dress up and change. Uh, we have crab legs on it here, but we are planning on it have other um, locomotion that you'll be able to swap out, so you'll be moving around in the world in a different way visually, um, and that's going to be super cool. <laughs> it looks fantastic. I love this animation. It's yeah. so fun. It's, it's so satisfying it's awesome. just to run around you with You actually dudes. have, um, not only can you change the locomotion, that hatch on the front is an item that you can replace. The chest, shoulder pads uh, yeah. go on, new gloves. Uh, we have a helmet and head system for it, too. It allows you to change what it looks like up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, let's look at his skills, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. So he does have a, an interesting resource bar that I can show here, because I don't need to do damage to anybody Absolutely. to build it, right? It's, um, so his skills build up heat, generally. And then when you have that heat built up, like he's showing, you can use another skill to expend that, use that heat up to do a big damage skill. Um, and so it's kind of going back and forth between those um, skills that build heat and the skills that use up the heat. Uh, and many times I find myself having built up to just about full heat, only seeing a couple guys left, so I just swing my sword and whack <laughs> those guys to get rid of them, and then use that heat to start the next fight with a big hit. Yeah. You want to jump around with the spring? <laughs> yeah, the, I, the the legs, the way, the fact that locomotion can be changed out is so cool and fun. Mm -hmm. We haven't really announced or talked about what specific things it can change into, but um, suffice it to say, it's got a lot of charm and character and fun in how those legs change out. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure we'll see some items drop too that are going to completely change the way his model looks. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at uh, the skills. So let's so just see the skill So cyclone mode is a, a melee attack that is. Uh, part of it is just a great escape skill that allows you to spin through monsters and stuff, but it's also kind of that spin to win, barbarian type of thing. Yeah, spin to win. We've been trying hard <laughs> not to make it too overpowered after it, after having launched Diablo 2 with the barbarian, uh, just whirlwind barbarians being so ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, it, it still is an effective skill to run around and do. Yeah, oh, real quick, let's answer a couple questions. Uh, love how crazy Torchlight resources are. Well, that's not a question. But yeah, the, the both of these characters feel very different. Especially, yes. be not just their skill set, but their resource management as well. We're trying to make sure not only are these resource mechanics different from each other, but kind of have those meta mechanics be different from something you might have experienced before. Mm -hmm. We can't make anything wholly new, like in the world of M MOBAs and stuff with so many characters <laughs> everyone has seen. Yeah. It's familiar in some way, but in general, amongst action RPGs, the things that we're doing are different. And then there was another question about, so the clothing for Dusk Mage won't be equipable by Forge? 
Uh, it's a great question, and in fact, something I was personally working on in the last week. Um, <laughs> so there will be items that you can put into a shared stash and the other classes can use. And in particular for the Forge, that'll be like chest pieces, gloves, helmets, and shoulder pads. And then the weapon slots are pretty shareable as well. But the in specific, but the things like the um, locomotion and the uh, hatch are things that the, does, the Forge has as unique drops that are only for them. On top of that, there are some items that we've made that are just so different and unique, like those beehive shoulder pads we yeah, saw in Dustmage. Yeah, those are great. There just is no equivalent on the Forge <laughs> that has that bee flavor, feel, and style. And so those, you know, that particular one for, is an example of, of a, a Dusk Mage only shoulder pad because the flavor and style of it is just so special and unique yeah, that definitely. we can't really just pass that thing around. <laughs> um, but, yes, you'll be able to share things otherwise. Uh, cool. Wherever we can, we're trying to share the items. Um, but we have some exceptions. Like, you know, right now, the only the Dusk Mage has a staff set of animations to attack with. And the forge does it yet, so you yeah. can hand the staff back. He's got and forth. a sword and a shield, so yeah, we're, that would make sense. We're still just trying to catch up with that content. <laughs> so I keep hearing the WASD movement and mouse aiming. We've talked about it some. We have some people interested in maybe doing it. I'm a little nervous about having to support too many in styles of input and keeping the quality of that style of input high. So we'll see how whether or how we're able to what we're mm -hmm. able to do. Um, and uh, on the that game note, is oh. largely designed to be a. Uh, <laughs> You know, the traditional Torchlight and Diablo style of mouse aiming and keyboard clicking. Yeah, and we do have an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One controller hooked up here. Uh, the cable's kind of short. I can't actually show it on screen. Yeah. But you can see how seamlessly this switches over. Yeah. And so, you know, if, if you would prefer to play on controller, then you can just switch Absolutely. over to controller Even and it feels PC, great. You yeah. just grab the controller and play. Cool. All right. Let's cover the rest of the skills real quick, then we'll hop out there. And we'll start slaying some goblins. So I think we stopped on cyclone mode. So let's talk about vent, the vortex yeah, bomb. Vent, so this is one of our venting skills. It takes your heat and turns it into a big damage thing. Uh, this one actually pulls monsters in and then does a big explosion with a little bit of stun. Awesome. And then he has some range attacks. So he does have melee, which is basic attack right. is, is melee, melee. And then well. these two, yeah, and the vent. And spin to win, and then he has a couple range attacks. Yeah, the couple range attacks we're showing here is rapid fire, which is more about single target firing um, mm -hmm. rapidly. And then we have a shotgun blast, which is a cone of damage that's good for AoE. Yeah, and both of these build heat. Right. And uh, cyclone, cyclone mode does as well. As yeah, well, so yeah. that's, that's I mean, great. This is just a few of the skills that we have that yeah. we selected to show here at the, at, at the show. We definitely want to allow players to try out lots of different combinations and styles of play. That's awesome. Uh, somebody mentioned wanting to see more of the pets, so I'm just going to hop out, and I think the pets are randomized right now, but you will be able to choose your pets. For the pets sake of the yeah. demo, we wanted to make it where you just could one-click get in and not be not be slowed down by naming things, picking your specific pet, and that sort of thing, so it has For to sure. be random here at the show. But we are going to let you select from some of the pets when you create a character for which one you have. That's awesome. Um, but so, pets in general, it's going to be bigger and different things, since this is more of a, uh, a long-term game uh, with it um, we want it to be where you're not just stuck with a pet that you start with you're actually gonna be able to switch which pet you have you'll have ah. collection of pets you'll be able to get pet no, acquire pets to the game hey good info uh, that's those, awesome uh, uh, what how specifically those things happen we're still working on but it's more than just like I created my character this is my pet this is my pet forever Cool. So we can see how the dynamic with this character is a lot different too. And we're we're fighting a bunch of like zombies and it's, skellies we have a here. It's day night cycle, so it's a bit darker out now. Ah, uh -huh, yeah. And we have a whole different set of monsters that spawn during this time. That's so night cool. Night is about a third of the um, the total time, and uh, we we change the monsters out. We even have damaged undead monster um, weapons and damage to and, and armor for undead. That allows you, if you want to, to kind of optimize for night and optimize for day. That's incredible. <laughs> what a cool feature. So we can see here, like, the the uh, forge in front opens up and there's, like, a, a railgun yeah, underneath. Yeah, cannon comes out. <laughs> and those cannon models vary. Every item you get for that can have a different looking cannon. That's super cool. Everyone worries about <laughs> in-game. We worry about in-game. Um, we have some things we can talk about there, but not a lot that we can talk about the in-game. It's not because we haven't talked about it. But it's just there's still pieces that we keep trying to reveal over time. Yeah, for sure. All right, cool. It looks like we got a fire armor piece, so let's equip that. Whoa! Yeah. 
Whoa, and you can it's see like a how shield. the hatch in the front uh, actually changes what yeah. it looks like. Whoa, whoa, it changes the whole body. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, great. one of the fun things about having a robot as a character is you can really change the shape and, and feel of that character um, with items. It's... It's, it's just so it's just so fun and cool. <laughs> yeah, this is fantastic. You just want to look fancy? Me too, of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs> and there are a lot of fancy looks for you in this game, I'm sure. Bam. Oh, whoa, that thing looks great. Okay, um, we, I, I have to stop and equip this. Whoop. I want to see what it looks like. There we go. Hardened chest armor. So, yeah, oh, so some so of them beefy. are bigger, some are smaller. Some have a really strong goblin flavor with, <laughs> with fur and, and rope. And, and wood kind of tied on so as if he's taken all these pieces from the goblin land and kind of compiled it together to do a thing. Yeah. This is more our more aquatic looking armor, like a little bit more like 2,000 Leagues Under the Sea <laughs> um, kind of um, steampunk feel. We also have a bug area that we, you can play in. Mm -hmm. We've shown some in the cinematics. Yeah. The, the armor you can get there is all insecty and carapace and, and bug stuff that you slapped on top of his, his body. Um, it's been really fun to take these environments and these worlds that have a different style and flavor and combine it with the type of armor that the players can have in that place. Yeah, it's themed, so you can tell when you run up against another player, you can see their armor and figure out like which zone or biome they got guy, it this from. This is the goblin stuff that they're yeah. wearing. Yeah. And I've seen their, like, what we're getting now is only a very small piece of the total armor that's available. Yeah. And you can see there's a, a bunch of different rarities to them, and a uh, lot of uh, damage affixes and damage types, I should say. Yep. We, yeah. and the demo, though, we did open it up quite a bit more mm -hmm. than the actual game. That You're getting items from all over the game. Yeah. Um, just so we can have some cool visual variety for you to find. And also the, the fact that the luck is cranked through the roof, <laughs> and the, yeah. the item levels are cranked through the roof. We just wanted to get powerful fast. Yeah, of course. All right, let's see. I think I got a couple weapons here. All right, there's a nice weapon. There's also a nice weapon. Let's look at both of these. Ooh, that was cool. Whoa! Yeah, so a couple things about the weapons. It's just like in Torchlight, um, in previous Torchlight games, we really are trying to focus on making sure that the weapons are different and have a different style of play. The mace that you have there, if you can just hover on the uh, oh, item yeah. tool tip, it's, it's smashing one enemy for extra damage. Ah. It's a little slower, but it really hits hard. Oh, I see the animation's different, too. Yeah, it's a different That's animation sick. than with the sword. It hits one target, but it hits it hard. Um, whereas with the sword, you've got a fast attack that does a cone and actually does less than 100% damage, but it's quick and it's area. Nice. So we want these um, weapons, even in their basic attack, to kind of change the style of play for the base um, that you want to have. Yeah. And so that's like, that right now the mace is a perfect thing for taking on that brute. <laughs> yeah. But when it comes to like fighting a lot of little goblins, go back to the shotgun blast, do area effect, mm -hmm. and it's going to work better. Yeah, there's a question. Uh, Tyler, what's the goblin head icon for the item tool tips? Oh, great question. So right that here. is... Yeah. <laughs> they can't see what we're pointing, yeah, yeah. but yeah, you guys uh, know. <laughs> the, uh, the goblin head icon is just below the magic hat phrase yeah. there. That's saying what part of the world that item is for. And so that is, you know, all the items we're getting here are in the goblin forest, so we're getting goblin forest items. Nice. Um, we'll go into more detail about what those really mean later, but suffice to say, that each item kind of has an origin and a part of the world that it's, it's from and that it's made f and it's for. Whoa, that's a fat weapon. All right, we're going to equip that for sure. Yeah. Ooh, that looks good. Oh, I just crunched that guy. Someone's right. asking about <laughs> experience and leveling and stuff. Um, we definitely have, are taking kind of a different look at uh, uh, what happens in an RPG. And you're seeing this actually across the industry in a lot of RPGs. They're stepping away from character level, mm -hmm. and they're stepping away from kind of like stats of strength and dexterity being that important. I mean, a lot of games that have them auto-assign them to you now, and a lot of the ga uh, games that have the uh, character level are adjusting and kind of ignoring it in many ways to try to make the game kind of more open to more people playing together. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, as we have just embraced that at, its, at our core um, and, and just having no character level and no stats at all. Plus, for me on stats, like I really don't like comparing plus 8 vitality to plus 27 health on an <laughs> I just want to understand what it does. and know, Even if it's on the same axis and it's the same metagame thing, I just want to make it one thing. Yeah, and of course that makes it a lot easier to play with friends too. We don't have to worry about being max level and they're just starting out. Absolutely. We're making it where if you take your high level items and you come back to a newbie area, we are pulling down the level, the effective level of those items while you're there so that you're powerful, 
but not ridiculous. We don't want you to be a finger of God running around in public, uh, <laughs> slaying all the monsters easily. On the flip side of that, we're also rewarding you for playing there because we know that there's some challenge to it. So you'll still be getting gold at about the same rate. You'll still be getting skill points about the same rate, and wood and stone and all those things. You won't be getting item. You know, if you're level, you used to have level 30 items. Well and you're back in a level 2 area, you're still going to get level 2 of monster um, mm -hmm. item drops. But the other stuff we're still rewarding you for. Nice. Uh, there's a lot of questions about endgame. I think we talked a little bit about that before, and I don't know if we're quite ready to talk about the of, full I mean, plan we're for talk endgame. About full plan, but mm -hmm. if I say a lot of it has to do with the forks, a lot of it has to do with wanting to encourage you to play a lot of characters mm -hmm. with different style builds and in different parts of the game. Um, we want we want a lot of the end game to be about playing the game itself, mm -hmm. um, not oh. it being a whole different activity. <laughs> oh, I got really lucky there. He almost hit me. <laughs> I was stationary. Yeah, he's got he's got some pretty good weapons and items here, so he's he's doing a lot of damage pretty fast. Yeah, and he knows what he's doing and how to use mm -hmm. what where. So um, it's making this look, fight look a little more trivial. Yeah, I've definitely but, played this many times. But, but the, um, <laughs> I've but, tested but, this a lot. But the, honestly, when we're seeing people on the show floor playing this. The reaction has been, this is clearly Torchlight combat, this mm -hmm. is clearly Torchlight style, and boy, this fight with Wide Load is hard. Yeah. Um, which, for us in the office, yes, it's kind of a pushover. <laughs> uh, when you play this, um, but when you play the real game, he's got four or five times many hit points, and he hits really hard. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the loot, too. We're going to be shared across classes. We are not ready to talk too much about how that works, but we have plans to have some skills that are shared. Um, but the, the skills we're showing here are very, very class specific, but we've talked about some mechanisms where we might not be doing that, where we might make some skills that can be shared. Mm -hmm. um, I'm nervous about talking about some of that because A, some of those features we haven't really announced, and, and B, the other ideas we just haven't implemented. And anytime it hasn't been implemented, I'm nervous to talk about it. Yeah. Which is totally understandable. we got a long way to go on this game right. still, but at, at, the, at least this demo is absolutely wonderful. Especially. You can see, yeah. It definitely feels like Torchlight. It plays exactly how you would want an ARPG to play. And well, then once you add more people in there too, like the MMO dynamic of it, oh, it's just it's, oh, yeah, it's really fantastic. Fun. A lot of people are asking about this bar that's at the bottom of the screen. We, uh, I think our, our QA lead had the best answer for that, which is it's how excited you, uh, the audience is about watching the game, and, <laughs> and it's working perfectly. Um, <laughs> okay. We, uh, we still have more to announce with that. It's related to a whole system that isn't present in the demo, but that we'll be excited to give a lot more details on later. That's great. <laughs> All right, cool. So I think that mostly wraps it up. Awesome. Uh, this has been a, a, like, oh, man, this demo is so fun. I love being able to actually show this to the public because, you know, we've been working on this for so long, yeah. and, like, we only announced just earlier this month, too. It's been really awesome to see how many people here at the show are just excited to hear that there is a Torchlight game. <laughs> yeah. We're, sh we're shocked that we're announced. They hadn't knew, didn't know anything about it until they got here. And then when they get in and play it, there's been just a really encouraging reaction of, like, yes, this is Torchlight. Yes, this is the combat I expect. Yeah. And now they just want to know more and see where it's going. Um, and we'll keep up the conversation talking about features and moving forward, revealing um, so, um, piece by piece as we go. Yep. Cool. So we're running pretty short on time, but I just want to show off this bag. This is the Torchlight swag that we have here, if you don't mind. Let's yeah. Vanna White this thing. It's so cool. <laughs> so, yeah, so check this out. It has, like, it's a backpack. And so you can run this over your shoulders, and you can put a, this thing's gigantic. You can see it's very large. It's like people walk around with sandwich boards of our game all <laughs> yeah. around the floor. Yeah. So we are doing a giveaway right now on our social channels, so be sure to hit us up on Facebook and Twitter, at Play Torchlight. And we have three giveaways going right now. One of them is for an entire Perfect World swag pack here at PAX West, cool. which this is one of the items you awesome. can get. Yeah, so that's included in there, along with three other things. Um, also, there is uh, a GeForce giveaway for a, a GTX 1080, oh, which great. is like, yeah, it's, I mean, what, what more could you ask for? Great so Yeah, absolutely. And then a big shout out to Origin PC. They made us a branded computer. Oh, and it is so top of the line good. too. I yeah, we have it so out here. <laughs> we have it on the show floor out here. So if you're at PAX or you're going to be at PAX, you can check this thing out. And you have to go to their, they have a website set up for it. So they tweeted it out. It's on their Facebook too. And we retweeted them. So be sure to check out our social channels. Enter in to win that thing. It's absolutely insane. And yeah, big ups to Origin and Razer for hooking us up with all the equipment we have here and for putting that PC together. And of course, uh, NVIDIA for the graphics card too. Awesome.
please join us on Discord. We have a Discord channel for this game. We're actively in there. We're listening and talking and trying to engage the community all the time. We'll try to answer your questions as best we can. We want to make this game together with the Torchlight community. We want to be talking with you. We want to share with you. We want to make sure this is a game that you guys are excited about and would be in love and we're proud of. Yeah, we definitely want to know what you guys think and how you guys feel about what Torchlight Absolutely. should be. Yeah, so it, whether it's on the Discord or there's a community-run Reddit, which is our Torchlight. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, and then, of course, our uh, Twitter and Facebook channels. I check those every day. So let us know what you think. Let us know what you want to see. Uh, hit up those, <laughs> those giveaways. Absolutely. So uh, just signing out. Is there any final words? Get in. Talk to us. Be part of the community. We're here. We're listening. Yeah. Cool. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, if you missed anything, definitely go back and watch the VOD, and I'll be uploading this to YouTube uh, after the event, too. So for Tyler and myself, thank you all so much, and uh, we'll see you in the frontiers. Awesome. All right. Wave until we're out. <laughs>